Today on The Good Pot, we're going to be making a chicken that's roasted with honey and spices and served with a salad of einkorn berries and olives. We're going to want our chicken to be as crispy as possible, so we're going to pat it dry with a paper towel before we salt it for the dry brine. Pat the inside of your chicken dry too to make sure there's no moisture left over. Evenly season the top of your chicken with a teaspoon and a half of coarse kosher salt. After you've salted the chicken, you're going to put it in the fridge for 24 to 48 hours to dry brine. So this was the chicken after 48 hours in the fridge. The salt drew out a lot of moisture and made the skin nice and tacky, so it's going to get very crispy. I took off the skin at the bottom and put it in a bag in the freezer for a future use, but you don't have to do that. Pat the chicken dry again and poke shallow holes with a bamboo skewer all across the top of your chicken. This will allow steam to escape giving you a crisper crust and it will also allow the spices to penetrate the meat of the chicken. Toasting the spices really allows the flavor to come through, so we toasted the spices over medium heat until fragrant. Now we're going to grind the toasted spices. I grind my spices in a coffee grinder. Uh, I use a designated coffee grinder for spices so my coffee doesn't taste like spices and vice versa. If you fill the grinder up too much it's not going to grind thoroughly so I fill mine up halfway. I grind it and shake it to stir it up and make sure I get all the little bits at the bottom. Dump the ground spices into a fine mesh strainer to help separate any chunks that didn't get ground up. To the ground spices, you're going to add a few strokes of whole nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, and a half teaspoon of turmeric powder. Mix the spices well and add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Combine the oil with the spices and you'll have the paste that we're going to spread on top of our chicken. Next you're going to rub all of the spice paste into the top of the chicken. Once the chicken is coated with the paste, cut two onions through the root, leaving the root on so that the onions stay intact while roasting. Cut two apples in half through the middle. Two 
to a large cast iron pan, add a small amount of olive oil and spread it around with one of the apple halves. Now add the rest of the apples and the onions to the pan. This will be the platform that you roast your chicken on. Now your chicken is ready to go into the oven. Bring 5 cups of water to a boil and add 1 and a half cups of rinsed einkorn berries. Simmer the einkorn berries over medium heat until they're tender but chewy. Strain the cooked einkorn berries out of the water, steam up your camera, and lay them out on an oiled sheet tray. For the honey glaze, combine a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar, six sliced dates, and a third of a cup of honey. Once your chicken comes out of the oven, top it with half of the glaze. Throw the chicken under the broiler for 35 minutes, keeping an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't burn. Voila, here's the finished chicken. Just leave it in the pan for about 15 to 25 minutes to let it cool while you cut the olives. I'm using Castel Vetrano olives, which have a nice buttery texture and flavor to them. They're not the same as the regular briny green olives. I used about 8 to 10 olives, but you can use any type of olive that you want. Once you have the olives cut, zest one lemon into a separate bowl. Juice that same lemon into the bowl and add a few tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Next, add the cooked einkorn berries and the olives to the bowl. Add fresh mint and salt to taste. It 
separate the leg and make a straight line from the top to the bottom of the breast just left of the breastplate. To remove the breast, run the edge of your knife along the ribs separating the breast meat from the chicken. Remove any bones that might be left on the breast and then remove the chicken tender.